We're driving a Toyota Sienna minivan, Woodland Edition. That's the kind of off-road one. Coming up, we're actually gonna put it on dirt. But first, information explosion. The Toyota Sienna was all new for the 2021 model year, and we reviewed it previously, but we did not review the XLE Woodland Edition one, which is the more rugged version. Let's begin with interior. It's funny because they have almost cribbed from the Toyota Prius previous generation play sheet, which is take comparatively inexpensive uh, materials, but make them look kind of interesting. Tap around. It's uh, pretty darn plasticky. We've gotten out of some very cheap vehicles recently that had some elevated materials. Uh, let's say the Mazda CX-30, very inexpensive, touch around, feels premium. This does not. But it really makes up for that with its functionality. There are so many drink holders. 18. 18. 18. Including a really cool one that's actually attached to the middle seats so that it's easy for a kiddo to reach. I also like how many places there are to tuck my phone. I can put it here. I can put it here. I can throw it up there. I really appreciate having a lot of places to tuck things when we're driving around. Yeah, so uh, Toyota did a really good job thinking about uh, um, nooks and crannies. They've got the bridge console, which has, again, cup holders. You've got uh, more cup holders. You've got center console, which is uh, oddly deep. And then under here, one of the things people really like in minivans is having a big open area. And they've kind of like literally bridged the gap between uh, an open area and having a console by having an upper console and then an area down here where you literally have your purse. Sweetie, show them your purse. It's right here. It's so handy. And I bet that would sort of hide it away when we park and leave the vehicle. Yeah, it makes your uh, bag a little less conspicuous. Seated in the second row, there's plenty of headroom, plenty of leg room. And then when you adjust the second row for my ideal position, I am the utterly average five foot 10 inch man you see before you. Uh, there's plenty of space on the third row too. More than adequate head clearance, plenty of knee clearance. The foot to butt ratio is pretty good. So you're not seated uh, uncomfortably knees high. Also, when I'm seated in the third row, um, I do like that there's a generous recline. However, operating it with the little pull that's over your shoulder is very, very awkward. In this particular Sienna, we have the long slide second row seats. In upper trims, they even include ottomans for uh, holding your legs in place, but uh, these slide 25 inches. So if there's nobody in the third row, you can really slide them back and just have unlimited leg space. That said, how did you find operating those second row seats? I found them a bit awkward to operate. I felt like they took more strength than I wanted to apply to them. Yeah, you gotta pull that little lever to slide them forward and back, and uh, there's another one that you can use to angle it, but it just feels a little bit awkward, a little cumbersome to move around. But fortunately, most of the time, kiddo just walked in between them, which was helpful. Yes, you can get the lower trims in eight passenger versions. Every other trim uh, comes in a seven passenger arrangement with second row captain's chairs. Even I, if I'm feeling motivated, can walk between those second row seats. For third row access, you can slide and flip the seat forward and uh, gain pretty easy access. If you have a car seat in the second row, you can still slide it forward and get just enough clearance. And if you were a kid getting back there, then it wouldn't be a problem. For an adult, you might need to angle that seat back forward. One thing I do wish was in here though, is a feature we experienced recently in the Ford Expedition, which is the kind of tilt and slide function where you can have a car seat installed and it very conveniently gets all the, uh, the way out of your way for third row access. Kiddo, how was it getting in and out of this minivan? It's slow and it doesn't need a step. And that makes the car easy. Did you use the little hand grip to get in? Yeah, and it's really long. I would say that is the largest grip, maybe by length, uh, in all of automotivedom. Yeah. Which is so handy for people of various heights. The sliding doors are a reason I really appreciate driving a minivan around because kiddo always wants to open her own door and in a tight parking lot, I'm always concerned about it hitting other vehicles. This 
that's just not gonna happen. And not only that, but in the Sienna, they're all powered. And then everything above the base trim, you get that kick function. And if you've ever had um, arms full of stuff and you need to put them in your car, being able to just do a little kick. And also it's really obvious because they have a little indicator where you should kick. And it works really reliably, both closing and opening. Another major plus for the Sienna is latch points. Uh, you've got them in the second row seats. You've got them in the third row seats. And you can do child seats in the third row in any of the positions. It's a really convenient vehicle for people who have a lot of kids. Did you find any issues um, getting a kiddo's uh, car seat installed? It was very simple. The door opening is massive. The latch points are super exposed. Lots of room around them. Easy peasy. As for cargo, there's 33.5 cubic feet behind the third row and it is very deep too. I was really impressed by that. It's a smart arrangement because that deep well is where the third row goes when it's um, folded. And man, that is a very easy third row to fold. It's literally just like one step on the down and then a one, two when you want to flip it up. The second row seats in the Sienna are not removable, unlike uh, many minivans. You can slide them forward and kind of angle the uh, seat back so it uh, makes as much space as possible. But if you're doing straight up cargo hauling most of the time in your minivan, the Sienna would not be the wisest choice. Last little note, uh, in eight passenger versions, the second row middle seat can be popped out and stored in the vehicle, which I think is really cool because a very common thing with minivan ownership is to ditch that middle seat so you have easier third row access. But then if you leave it in the ground, Garage, a, you have something in your garage, and B, you don't have a seat when you need that eighth seat. So being able to store it on board in that nook is cool. As for safety, the NHTSA has rated the Sienna five stars overall, though looking at the specifics, um, the driver front impact rating is three stars. Just thought I'd mention that, as the guy who's driving. Move over to the IIHS and they have named the Toyota Sienna a top safety pick plus. As for active safety, Toyota is really good about including all of the active features as standard equipment. In this case, you've got automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning and correction, full speed adaptive cruise control, and a seatbelt usage indicator. What do we think, family? Is the Toyota Sienna family friendly? I say asking already knowing the answer. <laughs> it's so family friendly. Sure is. Rear window test. That it? Good enough. <laughs> Armrest test. Okay, in a comfortable eight and four driving position, I have relatively easy access to the inboard and outboard uh, perches. However, it gets very, very hard with just a little bit of padding here. I really wish this was more padded. It's very, very firm. On the outboard, it's a little bit uh, softer, but I wouldn't say it's great. I'm gonna go 75% on the outboard, 40% on the inboard. Hey! Would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family plus the occasional helicopter video? If so, feel free to subscribe. Style! For this generation of Sienna, Toyota was inspired by the look of SUVs, though this is, does not look like an SUV. Um, but you notice that the uh, hood line is a little bit higher. Um, and in this version too, the Woodland, uh, it looks, uh, I guess, a little more rugged. It's got uh, 18 inch wheels. You've got uh, dark exterior trim. You've got roof rails with crossbars. And it sits up about 0.6 inches higher than a standard Sienna. I like how deeply sculpted this vehicle is. There's that line that goes from the rear wheel down to the bottom in the front. The um, rear taillights have a piece of black trim that almost makes them look like sad clown eyes, but <laughs> makes it very distinct. Like when you come across a Sienna, you immediately know it from the rear and you feel a little sad inside. <laughs> Are you a sad clown? Tell us in the comments. I'll also mention that the Toyota Sienna Woodland Edition is the only version you can get in this cool cement paint. When I look at the Sienna, I don't necessarily think, man, that's a good looking vehicle, but I do appreciate the effort. What do you guys think though? Do you like the look of the Toyota Sienna? If so, if no, tell us in the comment section. In motion. Hey, do you want to look cool in your minivan? Good luck, but this might help. Flying Eyes sunglasses. I wear them in the helicopter because they're made out of a special material called brazilamide, which lets them be super, super thin and fit under headset, and they're very lightweight, but they work well in your normal life. Sweetie, indoctrinate the people. <laughs> these are the ophthalmic line of Flying Eyes, which means they come with these removable magnetic tinted lenses. So they are sunglasses when I need sunglasses and my regular everyday glasses as well. They have the same properties that you enjoy with your Flying Eyes, the flexible temple, the stylishness. 
May they look better on you. But anyway, they're great. <laughs> look, I can't guarantee that you're gonna look cooler in your minivan when you're wearing flying eyes, but it certainly couldn't hurt. If you're ready to upgrade to aviation-grade eyewear, click the link in the description below. Use the promo code MICA to save 10% on flying eyes. Driving the Toyota Sienna home on the freeway, I noticed a little bit of wind noise. Not terrible, but you know, something I noticed. Um, ride quality, I would say, is generally comfortable, though over big and perhaps repeated bumps, uh, there is a tendency to float rather than for the suspension to settle. And it corners without much emotion, but uh, I think it's non-threatening and uh, kind of appropriate for the minivan category. Something I did notice is about the powertrain, which is that it feels very much like a hybrid powertrain. So it has an electronic continuously very transmission and when you floor it the Whee. vehicle will keep those engine revs at the power peak so you'll get some of that racing engine quality when you're coming up long hills and total output is fine but not like dazzling so if you had this thing loaded up with uh, family and friends I have a suspicion that there'd be a fair bit of that engine racing quality that is normal for the vehicle but uh, maybe not the most satisfying way to accelerate oh yeah if you didn't gather that from the information explosion all Toyota Siennas are hybrids oh and when making u-turns in the Toyota Sienna I noticed that it doesn't have a particularly huge turning circle 38.3 feet uh, is what I saw in the uh, spec sheet that is less than a Honda Odyssey and for everybody who just bought their Toyota Sienna, there are drive modes. I'm sport mode, and now I'm an eco. You'll never use that again after the first week. All right, that's what I think. But what does Sweetie think? Evie's driving. Uh, question number one, how's your driving position? Sometimes with larger vehicles, it can be a little bit weird to get like in a good, comfortable position where you really feel like you've got control of the controls. I'm not finding that here. The p driving position seems fine to me. Okay, what about visibility? The pillars are very thick, but the windows are also large. Um, there is this large B pillar right here, but that's very common based on my driving position. I will say blind spot warning comes standard on every Sienna, so that gives you a little bit of extra uh, confidence. Hooray! This being a larger vehicle, how do you find its size? I was impressed by how manageable it felt driving this. I feel like I understand where it is on the road. It sounds like you're approaching something like confidence driving this. Uh, Absolutely. All right, well, sweetie's confident. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. In total, I don't think you're gonna be surprised with unexpected emotion or sophistication driving the Sienna, but again, for the category, it is appropriate. Okay, as promised in the beginning of the video, let's put the tires on some dirt. Okay, we're not gonna do uh, any crazy off-roading in this thing, specifically because this has 6.9 inches of ground clearance, and that's not that much. <laughs> uh, and I really don't wanna go scraping the uh, bottom of this thing. The other thing is breakover angle. You've got the wheels very far forward and very far back, and it'd be very easy to uh, have this thing touch down. But we got you know, a couple of roots here, and uh, let's see if I can go over this without too much issue. Gentle. Yeah, nothing scraping. We have a little articulation right here, and yeah, got moving just fine. This system is really cool with having the electric motor for powering the rear. That's one of the reasons why this is so efficient uh, compared to the front wheel drive version. There's barely any redu reduction in fuel economy because you just have an electric motor back there and when you don't need it, it doesn't do anything. Being a responsible sort, I definitely would not take the Sienna on anything that requires like clearance over large objects or big articulation movements, but for slippery roads, maybe snowy roads, maybe dirt paths where you need just a little extra traction at low speed, I think it works well. Okay, let's get back on road. That was in a very good clap. <laughs> hey, we didn't break anything while driving off road. Cool. Moving forward to emotion factor. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and just say that there's not a huge emotion factor either by style or driving demeanor, but that's not to say there is not a potential emotion factor here. Uh, can you dig up any emotion, sweetie? Like the anti-flex flex, like you're just driving what's most practical despite what anyone thinks. There you're is, doing your own thing. That is so true. By way of an example, one of my friends and mentors uh, drives a Chevy Astro van. And he does that not because he has to, he's among the most successful people I know, but he chooses to because it meets his needs. And I think there's something very, very powerful about just doing what you think is best. What do you guys think? Is there an emotion factor here? If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Toyota Sienna of your very own, I'm guessing you're gonna need to sell your current car first. If you'd like to know what your current car is worth or how much you should pay for a Toyota Sienna, let Kelly Blue Book be your guide. Kelly Blue Book has been the pricing leader for more than 90 years, and that's why I use the old timey voice. Click the link in the description below.
I do too. Remarks! <laughs> Remark number one, infotainment. Every single Sienna has a nine inch screen and this is the old style of infotainment interface. This is not the new one that we experienced like uh, in the Toyota Tundra. I find using it very simple. There's clearly laid out physical buttons, knobs, and it's a touch screen, which is great. When you look at it though, you can tell it's been around a while. It's an established infotainment style. Yeah, it's a seasoned <laughs> infotainment style. Yes. And Toyota does win points by having seven USB ports standard. One other screen related note, I noticed that when you back up, the, the backup camera's pretty low res. It's like our early Micah Drives videos. It looks a little like, oh, eh, <laughs> eh, that could look better. One more visibility note, the Toyota Sienna does offer a 360 degree camera system. And uh, that kind of visibility, especially if you have a family, is really, really helpful. Um, there might be children around or like a bicycle place somewhere in your driveway. Uh, I only wish that it was available on trims below the fanciest platinum. Another worthwhile feature is something called Driver Easy Speak, which amplifies the front seat occupants' voices for those in back in case you need to get your children's attention and let them know that you love them. Yay! This one actually doesn't have driver easy speak, but I'm doing an adequate job of projecting my love to my child. Oh, and then if you have kids, you might be tempted to get the uh, rear seat entertainment system. It costs about $1,700 and includes a 1080, 11.6 inch screen. And uh, for my money, you could buy two iPads for the uh, less money. Um, and uh, they'd be just slightly smaller screens, but you'd get two of them. I think you're saying that because you're a person who is extremely organized and always knows where your <laughs> is. For me, I'm like, I'd always know exactly where it is and it would always be charged. I'm gonna counter that with the fact that there's a ton of USB ports in here. <laughs> so the charging thing isn't necessarily, uh, you know, a huge okay. deal, but, yeah. but I get your point. You wanna know where your stuff is, it's bolted in. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about engine choices. There's just one engine, it's a hybrid powertrain, but you can get it in front wheel drive versus all wheel drive. All wheel drive costs $2,000 or less depending on the trim. If you want to tow with your Sienna, it maxes out at 3,500 pounds. And a very cool thing, uh, the engine uses 87 octane, so that'll save you money. Sweetie? Yes. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Why, sure. For the trim recommendation, I was tempted to go with the base LE trim because it includes three zone climate control, power side doors, and it's pretty well equipped, but it does not include smart key access, which is a feature I will not live without. So we're gonna recommend the XLE trim. It adds $5,000 over the base car, and the base car is about 35 grand, but it adds an extra zone. So you've got four zone climate control, faux leather seating, front and rear parking sensors, that power lift gate, hands-free doors, and smart key access. As for competitors, we've got the Kia Carnival, the Honda Odyssey, and the Chrysler Pacifica, which also can be had in all-wheel drive. And if you're curious what uh, our adventures were like driving the uh, Pacifica around in snow, click up here. Hey, did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis. In thinking about the essence of the Toyota Sienna, it could use a little refinement in a couple of areas, but its cleverness is undeniable. Sweetie, you came up with this one. Tell them what you thought. <laughs> it's the Tracy Ullman version of the Simpsons of minivans. Such a good synopsis. You can't beat it. Family, I think we've done a great job reviewing the Toyota Sienna. May I have a five? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and five. And you. Come get your high five. Ah! Do your kids eat whole packs of seaweed as a snack? <laughs> Tell us in the comments. <laughs>